Hello everyone, Mizrim here bringing you today another competitive cast is going to be MUFC versus eHome in the Itskosu Monthly Madness Asia Invitationals. eHome, a very strong Chinese team who actually got the second place in the first international bringing home $250,000 and MUFC, another very strong Malaysian team, both of them are invited in the second international that's going to take place some month from here now. Uh, actually it's uh, yeah, almost only one month left. So. MUFC is going to start with a West Band and a Lashrag Band, and Ehome is going to answer with a Lycan Band. So, West Band, very, very strange. Uh, Wisp, one of these heroes who has been introduced into CM mode very recently in Dota 2, but haven't really seen a lot of play. And um, even very coordinated teams like Navi, when they picked Wisp, they had limited success. So, it's, it's quite hard to make a Wisp work. It does put a lot of pressure because uh, it's basically like a Furion ultimate that you have but uh, you can bring someone with you so it's ganking power at its finest but the problem is ganking is not everything in this game and getting kills does not equal to winning the game uh, sometimes we see uh, teams leading 10 20 kills ahead and then they just make one mistake they lose one team fight and the other team is suited for pushing and they just go down and wreck the barracks and then it's game over so Ehome is going to uh, follow up with a Darkseer ban. So Darkseer, uh, Lashrak, and the, uh, uh, in the Lycan ban, all very common bans. Wisp, a lot less. Uh, for those who don't know what Wisp does, uh, basically, uh, uh, he has this ultimate that I said was like for teleport. He can relocate somewhere and for something like 12 seconds. And after 12 seconds, he ports back automatically to the place where he was. Now, one thing that is very interesting is that if he actually tethered, which is one of his skills that uh, we may not see here because he's banned, if he's tethered to someone else, he will teleport with his ally at the location. So basically for 12 seconds, you have two heroes popping out of nowhere, ganking and then teleporting back to safety. So very, very annoying to deal with a good wisp, but he's going to get banned here, so not going to see that. And uh, we're going to see an, uh, an Enigma ban from MUFC, so... Enigma, um, more often picked than Ban, he is a very good hero all around, but um, that makes a lot of good heroes also pass through the banning phase, like uh, Prophet uh, is not going to get banned, Chen is going to be available in Volker, Windrunner, Broodmother, Enchantress, all of these heroes, no, Prophet is actually going to get banned by Ehome, they do not want to let MUFC have the first pick on the Prophet, so we're going to see what um, MUFC decide to go for. Uh, there's also the CK that is uh, really uh, appreciated by the uh, Asian teams and uh, the Shadow Demon that recently have seen a lot of play and it's going to be the Chen uh, picked by MUFC. So Chen, uh, also very very played hero in the Dota 2 scene. And it's one of those heroes which uh, you rarely see in pubs because um, it takes a lot of skills to play a good Chen and also not only it takes a lot of skills to play a good Chen, it takes a good team to make a Chen work. Because Chen itself, in, as a, as a one-man hero, isn't going to win the game. Like, it's not going to be like, a, let's say, a farm that morphling that in pubs you can just play alone and farm and farm and then come late game and finish everything. Chen need a really good team to work with the Chen. And Chaos Knight and Rubik picked by Ehome. So Chaos Knight, not very surprising considering Ehome, uh, Asian team, uh, basically, the... Uh, it's goes with Mathematics Asia, only Asian team, but um, what I mean is uh, Chaos Knight, really appreciated by those teams, and Chaos Knight is going to get second picked, and Rebic is going to be the follow-up, but uh, Rebic actually, as I said, he he wasn't that much picked when he first came out, because people just couldn't figure out how to put him, like, some teams uh, used the Rebic as a support Rebic, and then uh, some others decided to put Rebic in the mid lane to really like solo Rebic, get the experience, get the levels, get the gold, and uh, really, really impact a lot on the game. And um, Rebic is actually quite a good mid laner, and um, he isn't really picked as a first pick band material. So we're going to see if Ehome can really make Rebic work that well. Usually Rebic is picked after a first few picks, because he, he just... Rebic, as of Rebic only, cannot really do anything as well. It's, it depends a lot on what skills you can steal, and uh, if your team can uh, you know, really uh, 
work out the Rebic. So work out with the Rebic. So Shadow Demon and Invoker are gonna get picked by MUFC. Shadow Demon not very surprising, a very very good uh, support. And um, Invoker also a very good mid lane hero. And we're gonna see a battle of ages between Invoker and Rebic probably mid. Which uh, is quite funny because lore wise, uh, Rebic and Invoker are two very very old mages. And um, they have a lot of um, you know taunt lines. At least Rebic has some for Invoker, but Invoker, since he was um, re released way before Rebic, I do not know if they rework his lines yet. Remaining. And um, line-wise, what do we have yet? We have uh, Chen, who is going to jungle, because Chen cannot really lane at all. Invoker probably going to solo, as uh, Invoker always does. Rebic also probably going to solo. And um, that leaves uh, probably a Trilane with the Chaos Knight and a Trilane with the Shadow Demon. So Shadow Demon, he can work with a lot of heroes, but um, Chaos Knight already picked and uh, the Lashrak already banned. We probably won't see a Shadow Demon Kunkka that um, Mouseport quite appreciate, and um, they made it work when they actually uh, played this. They they managed to put the Kunkka in mid lane against the Queen of Pain, and the uh, Queen of Pain would just get killed, uh, just just killed a lot by the Kunkka plus the uh, Shadow Demon disruption and Torrent combo. Now Rinrunner is going to get Ready picked by Ehome, so we may already have our two solo laners for Ehome side, Rebic and Windrunner. And that means that um, MUFC probably will start banning the good support that goes into a tri lane, the good aggressive support. And uh, MUFC on their side, they need uh, some kind of uh, carry potential now, if they, if that is the, the, the path they want to choose. So. Ancient Apparition is going to get banned. Uh, the Chaos Knight Ancient Apparition is a very, very common lane. Like the um, Chaos Knight plus the Lothrak. So we're not going to be able to see this. In this game, the uh, MUFC side is going to decide to ban this. And uh, Ancient Apparition, even without the Chaos Knight, he's very annoying. And Ehome is going to ban Templar Assassin. This is very, very strange. So a Templar Assassin, very, very burst hero, uh, bursty hero. He, she, she, actually, she is a... Uh, very annoying to deal with, but we haven't seen her that much into CM mode because she get countered pretty hard as well by any form of damage over time, like um, Venomancer, for example. And right now, it's true that the e home side rather have like burst damage. Windrunner with the power shot, that's one hit. Rebic with the Fade Bolt, that's also one hit. Chaos Knight with the stun and the uh, blink, it's also one hit each, so no real damage over time that can really screw up the TA uh, uh, um, refraction. And uh, it's true that um, with the dis the uh, with the disruption from the Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon disrupt TA just has to walk in and put a put a, a trap and then you know meld and wait for the hero to pop again and tons of damage dealt to the poor target because with the um, with the Shadow Demon um, uh, curse as well. 40% added damage to the burst from the TA. This is going to take down any hero in one one shot. So MUFC is going to ban the Panda, and Ehome is going to answer with a, a Broodmother ban. So not wanting the Broodmother to go on side lane with the uh, with this uh, uh, with its lane now with the lane from the MUFC side. And MUFC is going to deny the Panda, a very good team fight hero, to Ehome. And right now we. Oh yeah, I was saying uh, Chen's gonna jungle Ten and uh, and the SD is probably gonna try lane, but um, it's gonna be a semi try lane if Chen is gonna is gonna be in the jungle. So probably an aggressive one. And um, let's see what the MUFC have in store now for us. So right now, um, as I said, Ehome a lot of burst damage coming up for them. So ganking wise, they're very strong. And Lone Druid is gonna get picked by MUFC. Lone Druid, one of these very favored carry nowadays with the clinks and also with the morphling because lone druid not only he can um he can really carry well but also also uh, compared to the other carries he's a sieging carry that means that when you're in your base and um and you're trying to defend lone druid can just send here uh, send up his bear and not commit to the fight so if you attack the bear you're putting yourself in a position at risk but if you do not attack the bear your your tower is taking damage, and uh, it's not like you know having a, an anti mage going on your tower or a morphling going on your tower because if you actually catch the anti mage or the morphling, you can actually turn the fight if the morphling or the anti mage die. But if the bear dies, lone drain can just summon another one. So, and tiny is gonna get picked by Ehome. This is also very rare as a hero, tiny. So even more burst coming up from the Ehome side. Tiny now, uh, 
So adding to that gank ability, the uh, Chaos Knight with the stun, the Tiny with the stun and toss combo that can just burst down anyone on the MUFC side, bar perhaps the Lone Druid if he's in bear form. But um, yeah, Shadow Demon's gonna get, if he gets caught up by the Tiny, he's dead. Chen, he's dead. And Invoker pretty much dead also. So Lone Druid, pretty much the only one who can withstand the burst damage if he's in ulti form, so if he's in bear form which is uh, not going to be the case for the first 5 levels. And Sand King picked by MUFC, so now Sand King allowing for them for mm, for more teamfight ability, I guess? Right now, right now in, the team, in, the, in team fights, what do they have? They have the Sand King ultimate, and they have the, uh, the spells from the invokers. But the rest of it... It really comes down to, I think, yanking and pushing, because the problem is, in these team fights, the uh, Shadow Demon cannot really do a lot of things. He can, he can really like set up the team fight and, um, and you know, uh, catch up one or two heroes. But once this is, when, once the first, uh, you know, the first few seconds have, uh, have passed, Shadow Demon is just going to have to have to wait for his cooldown, and um, he does not have any big AOE ability. So Chen, I, uh, Chen doesn't have any uh, AOE ability either. He has just this heal that can really help up his team in team fights, and it's gonna rely on the Invoker and the Sand King in these team fights. Can, what can they do, and can they really control the team fight well? Lina's gonna get picked by Ehome, so even more burst. So Ehome right now they have huge, huge burst potential, and that's may, that may be why they ban the um, TA because TA is one of those heroes who really fare well against the burst. Lina used the Laguna Blade, no problem. One stack of refractions off, she still has six left. And it's very annoying for heroes like Lina to go against a TA because she used her three spells, that's only three um, That's only three stacks of the, this, uh, this, uh, the refraction. So the MUFC side will have to be very careful about not getting picked off. And um, yep. The version, the Dota version is still bugged out. We still have a headless Chaos Knight. So King J is going to be on the Lina, Cupid Cat on the Chaos Knight, QQQ on the Windrunner, the Rebic played by MMY, and Lamb on the Tiny. So we have on the other side TFG played by uh, uh, playing Evoker, uh, Nick on the Lone Druid, Ling on the Chen, Sharky on the Sand King, and someone who just disconnected on the Shadow Demon. So Probably not going to see a Rebic and uh, and uh, Ring Runner solo lane now because we have a Tiny in the mix and Tiny Chaos Knight. I really doubt they are going to stand on the same lane because they both need experience. So either we're gonna see a support Wind Runner or a support Rebic. It's gonna be oh maybe maybe um I do not know if this is the case in Dota 2, but uh, the fact of the matter is in Dota 1 um, the reason why Avalanche did uh, dealt two times the damage if you toss the unit the enemy, it's because the avalanche dealt the damage by checking the Z axis, so where you are in the air, for example, this is the X, this is the Y, and the Z is when you're going up and down in the air. So maybe, I'm saying maybe, I do not know if this is, a, this is the case, maybe telekinesis works the same way, because it sends a unit in the air, so maybe the avalanche will, dealt, will deal more damage uh, this way. And um, I actually doubt it will because Avalanche and Toss, they probably have been uh, changed in Dota 2, so they work. Uh, Avalanche only work with Toss, so it's actually uh, easier. And um, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. So on the other side, we have uh, Net reconnecting on the Shadow Demon, and what's gonna be is probably a Lone Druid solo and 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 a Invoker solo and Shadow Demon Sand King Chen bottom. So really, really letting the Sand King get a lot of farm, if that is the case, I'm not sure. Because uh, Sand King, as usual, he can be played as a support, but it's one of those support hero, in quotes, support hero that really scale well with levels and items. If he really gets this level 6 epicenter quickly, he will be able to deal a, really a ton of damage when, whenever he starts ganking. And plus, if he gets the farm, he can get this very early um, a blink dagger, and uh, this is going to do a lot of damage to the uh, other enemy side, the E-home side. So what are we seeing here? Uh, it's, lo it looks like Invoker's gonna solo bottom and um, we're gonna have a, a, dual, a dual lane middle 
And Ehome checking out their own jungle, not wanting the uh, the MUSC side to ward off. And um, actually, Nick is going to be okay because uh, the the advantage with Lone Druid is he, he can scout with his uh, bear, which is named Lycan Wolf in this version because he's so bugged out. We can even see on the minimap the this uh, <laughs> this tower's icon is actually a, a dot for some reason. And they're just going to run around the jungle. Nothing, no one's going to spot anyone. And uh, they actually, MUFC side, know they have to be real careful because coming from the E home side, they have they they have potentially five disables at level one. Lina stun, uh, MMY's the telekinesis, the tiny's uh, avalanche, and the chaos knight's bolt, the and maybe the windrunner shackle shot if you need it. But uh, a lot of uh, level one ganking potential coming out from the E home. So Windrunner is going to go bottom with the double damage, and we have Capit Cat and King J in the middle lane with the Lina and the Chaos Knight combo. So somewhat aching to the um, uh, Chaos Knight plus the Lashrak combo with the AoE stun follow up from the Chaos Bolt. And what are we going to see here? Oh, the bear being very very annoying and pulling off the creeps. So why is he doing this? It's to avoid having the uh, Lone Drake fighting under the enemy tower and being uh, able to get ganked. By pulling up the creeps like this, he actually uh, makes sure that he can fight and get the experience under he o his own tower. So we're gonna have to take a look at the mid lane because this is probably where the kills are gonna come off with the uh, Chaos Knight and with the Chaos Knight Lina and on the other side we have the Shadow Demon Saint King so both, uh, both teams have huge killing potential in the mid lane. And Sen King already taking a lot of harassment, so he'll he'll has to be careful to not get ganked, uh, to not get uh, stunned by the Chaos Knight. Actually, it's quite okay because the Shadow Demon is one of those heroes who can disrupt the combo by using disruption, of course, on his ally. So Chaos Knight use the bolt, no problem. Uh, if Lina actually starts her animation, Shadow Demon just has to disrupt the Sen King, and he will he won't take damage from the stun. So now level two. For each, and um, right now, if it stays that way, the um, MUFC side is going to take a little bit of advantage due to the fact that Chen is jungling, so it's like an extra uh, extra lane for the MUFC side. And um, let's just see the current gold. So the the gold, yeah, the, the total gold earned. So Sand King did it very very well compared to the uh, Chaos Knight. He's sitting as a right now Tiny and uh, and Sand King both farming very well. The Lone Druid having a lot of trouble trying to um, get the pull right, and uh, the problem is he's trying to pull the creeps with his bear, but uh, Rebek is actually doing also a quite decent job to pull his own creeps into the the neutral Delusion. creeps, which are called the mud golems, but they are not; they're ogres. First and first blood on ah oh, sorry I missed first the first blood. blood so Chen Chen getting the first blood on the poor Windrunner. <clears throat> so uh, probably going yeah it's a uh, cold snap pull up by uh, actually Satyr Soul Stealer. So not uh, no extra disable here. Probably just getting the uh, the damage from the shockwave and from the Chen's nuke. So now Chen with the first blood a lot of gold in his pocket. He's probably going to get this fast um, mechanism and he's going to be happy with it. So Lone Druid, we see so little gold earned and um, he's uh, taking what little gold he can. On the other side we have the Tiny farming very well, Chaos Knight also quite well. And we see the Windrunner compared to the um, Windrunner compared to the Lone Druid, both on the solo lane and both. And uh, Windrunner, even dying one, still earn more gold than the Lone Druid. And uh, even the Rebek here, they support Rebek earning more gold than the uh, than the uh, than, than the uh, Shadow Demon. Same for Lina. Lina is gonna get initiated on, and uh, we have a Sun Strike coming in, a stun from Sand King, and Lina is she gonna stay alive? She needs one more right click to go down. She's using the self, so she's gonna stay alive, and it's it's actually Nick that's uh, Sharky that's gonna be in danger. Nope, Sharky also using a. A uh, salve here and uh, Chaos Knight deciding not to go for this stun. So a bit of a, a bit of a trade off going up middle, but uh, each one using a salve. So no one dying here. Chaos Knight now with his bottle. Let's see the items how they how, how it goes. And uh, we have uh, boots for the Sand King. 
nothing for the lone druid. Shadow Dying demon only sitting with ward, and uh, and and Chen nothing else new. We have oh we have a gang coming out for nope. He's not going to go bottom lane. So on the radiant side, no new items for anyone, and on the e home side, only a bottle got on the chaos knight. So. Let's see what the middle lane is going on. So, Windrunner is hitting level 4, Invoker level 5, and Invoker 14 for 7, and Windrunner 12 for 5. So, she's really holding the, the, the lane quite well. And uh, Windrunner is actually one of those few heroes. Oh, sorry. King J actually getting killed here, and he's gonna survive the last hit. N uh, Net going very far in, but he gets the kill. He gets a kill on the Lina. Lina actually waiting to. Uh, with Lina just stopping a moment to get a. to eat a tango, and uh, that's. Actually, putting her demise, and um, Cat's not gonna follow up the low health Ben King because he he sees that the chain is here with the Wild King Tornado. It's so annoying. Cat's not even using a solve, so very concerned here about potential uh, damage incoming. So I was saying, uh, Invoker actually and uh, Windrunner one of those few heroes who can stand very well against Invoker with this Windrun. And you see that she's not even scaling the Shackle Shot. I do not know if this is the mistake. Or if it's actually just um, just the, the way QQQ wanted to build this uh, Windrunner. She decided not to go for the Shackle Shot, but 2 level Windrun. And uh, this adds 0 0.75 seconds of, um, of uh, increased duration. The enemy slow isn't really going to cut, the, you know, make uh, that much difference. And not no change for the mana cost and no change for the uh, its cooldown as well. So Lam here actually, uh, I think, tried to go with the M with MMY for a little bit of um, gank on the Londrid, but Londrid being very careful with his bear, uh, you know, scouting with the bear. And uh, Shadow Demon is going to get the uh, invisibility rune, so we'll have to look out for a kill from the Shadow Demon. Lam now sitting with his fade boots. So he can catch up the he can catch up Lone Druid. He has no boots, Lone Druid, so he has to be careful. Okay. If they run on him, he's gonna probably going to die. And uh, Ned sitting here, very very looking looking at the Chaos Knight, and Chen is here, so they're gonna go on the on the Chaos Knight, and Sand Strike gonna come in, and Nuke's gonna come in from everyone. Sand King follows with the uh, Burst Strike and the Ursa Clap, and Lina couldn't save his ally. So, oh, and in the meantime, it's it's actually the lone druid going down. So land catching him up. As I said, tiny with this move speed, you see how fast he can go, like above 400 move speed. And right now, the lone druid without boots, 315, and he has not scaled the rabbit. So, no movement speed buff for him. And uh, he's sitting very, 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 uh, you know, sad right now at 800 gold earned. If we see his uh, gold per minute, uh, yeah. No, this is current gold. Where is the gold per minute? Yes, gold per minute, 116. So even less than the Shadow Demon. So he's getting outfarmed by his support hero, and this is very hard for him. He he really needs the 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 advantage of having a lone druid. Usually, is when he gets this early radiance, he can really put out a lot of pressure on the support heroes. Cupid Cat throwing a stun on the Walkin, denying him this tornado. And right now it's actually being very very passive. Um, both teams are farming pretty uh, pretty well. No push has been attempted by the Chen. He's sitting in his jungle, you know, getting his levels. And now he's level six, so he has this ultimate we have to look out for. This hand of gold healing everyone, uh, every ally at least on the map. And QQQ still sitting in the so harassing the invoker. Invoker going the quest exhort as we could see from the sun strikes going. On the mid lane, and uh, four second stuns gonna land on the Sand King. He won't be able to follow the uh, Chaos Knight, but he he actually already used his burst right? I think he missed it. Radiance bottom tower is under so, attack. what is uh, QQQ, uh, QQQ with 24 8 and uh, TFG for 39 for 20 uh, 21? So now he's taking a, a really a strong advantage, and they're gonna go on. Oh, actually, no, I thought it was the enemy, but uh, Nick is gonna get the support from. Uh, the Chen plus the Shadow Demon with the double damage and in smoke. So Lam has to be very careful. He has very low on health and he has no stun. And if he gets entangled, this is lights off for Tiny. They're gonna catch up Rubik on the side lane. Rubik is gonna get disrupted and Rubik's gonna go down instantly. No, he's not. Very good stun by the by Lam. Actually pushing out the enemies. 
and uh, MMO is running away for dear life, and um, he actually survives. I I'm surprised at this. The Re the Rebic being so squishy, and um, you know, uh, Shadow Demon even landing a curse on the Rebic. I, I thought two hits would have brought him down, but a very good uh, a very good play by Lam coming in just for the sake of uh, putting pressure on the enemies and uh, making them back. And uh, MMY is going to get pushed away by a Centaur. Chaos Knight getting a kill middle lane on the Skin King with the help of Lina. And right now, MUFC is going to look to siege the top tower, but um, they have a tiny right now with the enough mana for an Avalanche again, and uh, Rebic is dealing with full mana. And Rebic and uh, Tiny also has this uh, Dream of Endurance right now, so even more move speed, even more stats, so 1.1k health, he's going to be hard to bring down. Rebic, on the other hand, 600 health only. Same for Chen and uh, a Lone Druid, 700 health, so... Bottom lane, they're actually you know still farming up, both. With the invo Invoker actually being able to do something on the other side of the map because he has the Sun Strike, so global presence. Gwynwer not having a TP, so that's she's not going to be able to help. Same Lina not having a TP. Cupid Cat, he has a TP, so if they actually go and um, MUFC actually wasting a lot of time top lane waiting for something to happen, and um, they're gonna go in. The Centaur goes goes first to tank the tower, and um, Sand King actually getting stunned by the telekinesis, and Lamb running away from the tower. Is it that? Oh, very good stun landing on three, and uh, Sharky missing his stun. MMY now going in and. Um, Sunstrike not gonna land on anyone. The uh, the Chen ultimate is gonna has, try to help his allies. MUFC is a uh, um, Sharky Sand King using his ultimate. No one dying here yet, and Invoker taking the kill on the tiny. Very good teleport, and now Cupid Cat in a lot of trouble. He's gonna get killed as well. Very strange fight here. Very good stun and toss by the tiny getting three, but no one actually being able to follow up on this uh, very good tiny initiation. Rebic now n out of mana, he really has to back off, he has a tornado on his tail and uh, he cannot really survive against Dyer's 3 heroes and Net has to be very careful, he's low on health and we have the catapult named the Dire Enchant pounding on the tower 504, let's see the XP graph, experience graph was uh, in the Dire's advantage, not so much, only 1k and uh, now he's, it's at 0 and gold graph same, now with the tower kill probably going to go the way of the Radiant so Nick trying to farm up as well as he can now with the few uh, moments he, he has in the mid lanes and alone. So he's up to 178 Radiant gold per minute. It's attack. it's nothing for a carry. It's nothing like a carry would want. At that stage of the game, he has 23 for zero and 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 one death to his uh, book. As a carry, you usually want to have like at least 50 and 40 if you're under, under a lot of pressure. But 23 at 12 minutes into the game. It's harsh, it's harsh. He's looking very far from his uh, Sacred Relic. Tiny gotta get pushed away by the uh, curse from Net. And Cupid Cat being very, very aggressive here. He has to be careful, he can, might get stunned by the Centaur. And everyone's sitting in smoke here, but uh, no, they're gonna get revealed. Yes, they're gonna get revealed by the Sand King here. And they're gonna just gonna steal the creeps on the Chen. In the meantime, QQQ and uh, TFG are still sitting on the bottom lane. Farming up, farming up, farming up. Sand King gonna look for a kill on the Windrunner, but QQQ being very careful, running away. And QQQ going for Tranquil Boots, so this is actually pretty strange. Usually we see Windrunner either going for Phase Boots or a Cane Boots if she wants to help her team. Here she's looking at the Tranquil Boots to stay on the lane and withstand the Harris. And she now has a Invisibility Rune, so we have to look out for the Shackle Shroud Initiation, only level 1 though, so... She's going now for Sage Mask, a Ring of Regen, probably a Soul Ring. So it's gonna uh, make her a make her able to get some mana from the soul ring, and she sees the lone druid. She's still in the invis room. She also sees sand king, so she knows everyone who's here. Her team also knows, so they'll have to be careful. And she sees sand king going in. She's gonna try to land a shackle, and she's gonna land one perfect on the sand king, denying a cupid cat ability to uh, to send uh, to the to uh, to bar strike, and uh, tiny is gonna run away with low health. Chaos Knight also now is uh, running away and Net having a lot of very very few HP left. I hear uh, fighting ha happening in the mid lane. Invoker using uh, uh, surviving the uh, with the Lina Laguna Blade and uh, he's now gonna get saved by the uh, disruption. Is she is she gonna get caught up? 
Yes, one, two, three strikes, and uh, Cupid Cat's gonna get check. Uh, he's gonna get entangled by the bear. He's gonna go down as well. Lina using the Laguna Blade on the Invoker, not being able to kill him. And now Rebek getting chased by Nick. Is he gonna get uh, shackle shot? Uh, is he gonna get entangled? Uh, we don't know with the haste, so she's gonna be okay. She's actually, she's actually being very, very cocky here. She has to be careful. You can bring her down even with haste and. Tiny looking to get the kill, but uh, getting untangled, and this is gonna result in um, this is gonna result in the uh, win run of kill and stun missing. Cold snap going on the Sand King stole by Rebek, but uh, not gonna be not gonna be enough. So eight four six now. Experience graph still hovering around zero and one k gold for the advantage of the radiant. So this fight going pretty well for uh, MUSC side. They traded off for uh, the, yeah. They killed the uh, the Chaos Knight in the mix, the Lina and the and the uh, the Windrunner. I think did did they kill anyone else? They killed the, uh, yeah, Tiny Chaos Knight, and they destroyed. No, no, so no, this is not. No, it's not to the. It's not updated yet. So now Cupid Cat four for three, forty four creep kills, sixteen uh, denies. Let's see here here. No, this is the kill this. So. For the Radiant side, we have uh, the Invoker farming very well at 72 for 35, and uh, Lone Druid only at 35 for 6, 36 for 3 now. And uh, Lina, on the other side, we have Lina 30, 13 for 6, so support hero. Shackle not gonna land. Oh, I'm sorry, Chen actually getting the kill on the Chaos Knight again with the help of Sand King. And um, we have the Tiny 70, 72 for 6 as well. Winner 41 for 10, Chaos Knight 46 for 16, so they're all for farming pretty well. It's uh, aching to this uh, Radiant side, 38 for 4 against 40, or 41 for 10, and 46 for 16 for 31 for 7. But you have to remember, we have the Chen in the woods, so this is extra experience for the Radiant side. And um, they are going to look to dive the MMY and Lina bottom line. MMY with the Rebic Lina, both very low health of the pole hero. And um Disruption's gonna land. Shadow Demon's gonna get disrupted, he's gonna get uh, sent in the air, but uh, no matter. And now three teleports coming in, two teleports coming in. The Shadow Demon's gonna die before getting sent off to base and Sand King also getting caught up. Now Lamb getting a getting cold snap and he's taking a lot of damage from the from the from the trans from the uh uh, sorry, Invoker's getting killed in the meantime by the Chaos Knight plus the help of uh, the Rebic and the uh, Windrunner. So too much Disable coming in. And uh, Lan almost dying to these four spirits named Trent in this version. In the meantime, Laundry taking a tower middle. So 3 4 uh, no, 4 4 1. Uh, no, 4 4. Yeah, 4 4 1. Only the Lina dying here. And uh, in the Radiant side, everyone dying bar the uh, Laundry. And the Radiant side, uh, the Dire side, not having taken a single tower yet, and they're probably going to look for the tower. Sand King sitting here in the side lane, but he has no epicenter. But he has teleport support coming in. And yeah, we see the Dire side running away. They are low on mana, they do not really want to do uh, to make any mistake. And Chaos Knight's Illusion actually taking the tower, so I'm surprised uh, Sand King not even trying to deny the, the, the tower. He. he he might have been concerned by the the uh, a probable, for example, smoke or something, but um, still strange. He didn't even try. So, Lan now sitting with the boots, face boots, and run of the nearest. With that much gold, I'm surprised he didn't go for early blink dagger. So instead, he's just gonna bank on the move speed with from the face boots and the drum of endurance. We may even see him going for. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just. Uh, I'm just... I was wondering if uh, Yasha was uh, going to be a good uh, buy on Tiny or the Yule Scepter, but uh, probably won't need those items. Who who knows? I'm not a Tiny player anyway, so banking on and stacking these uh, move speed items. And there he's gonna stand, uh, use his combo on the Forge Spirit to bring them down. Forge Spirit actually dealing a lot of damage for the to the Tiny because Tiny has very low, um, very 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 low armor. So now Invoker has to be careful. If he does not use his uh, his uh, ghost wall quickly, he's gonna get caught off, and he is. So, oh, very good force staff to 
to uh, to dodge. And uh, Lina's taking a lot of damage from the Force Spirit. She might go down, she will go down. And Invoker now, he's running away, but he only needs a few... No, he's gonna get stunned and, um, and tossed in the air. And no time enough for using the... Uh, no, not enough time to use the Ghost Wall. On the same time, Sand King killing the uh, the Windrunner, but uh, now in a lot of trouble. And Chaos Knight actually trying to follow the Sand King. The uh, the uh, Shadow Demon dying on the meantime. Very good block from the uh, Wild Kings here, but uh, is he going to be able to run away? No, Telekinesis still his death. And Tiny following up the Chen. Whoa, the Tusk taking him down instantly almost. And one punch from the Tiny. 230 damage by one punch. Enough to bring down the Chen. The Chen only uh, sitting with uh, something like 800 health maximum. Not having completed his mechanism, he needs uh, 700 gold more. And let's take a look at the items very quickly. Uh, we have the Invoker now, 4 staff, as well as face boots. So a lot of mobility coming from the Invoker. And uh, with the Bracer, he's probably looking for a Drum of Endurance. So old style Invoker build, uh, banking up mobility. But still, uh, still, usually we see Wex Invoker using this build with Wex. This way he can run out with almost a um, uh, haste all the time, but uh, with the Exhort, not going to be the case. Now pounding on the middle lane tower, and the TP supporters are going to come in, and they're going to go back off. The Emma e is going to play it safe, and this time the Illusion not going to be enough to get the tower. And are they going to deny it? They're probably going to deny it, so let's see. Uh, Chen sitting with the Arcane Boots, and um, Almost has his, no, 800 gold left for this, oh, actually does he have it? No, that's the Dream of Endurance flying up to the Invoker, so still uh, still 700 gold away from his um, mechanism. Shadow Demon sitting very poor with two Bracers to survive uh, the burst coming from the Dire side. Uh, Lone Druid also very, very poor. What does he have? No, actually he's he's 100 gold away from his, uh, re uh, his uh, Relic, so he has to be careful. He's probably going to catch up the Lina. Is he going to go on her? Uh, looks like it. And oh, entangle at first hit. This looks very bad for the Lina, but uh, now nah, he's not gonna he's not gonna push his luck. He doesn't want he doesn't want to get caught up with that, that close to his uh, sacred relic. And Sen King now also with a bling dagger, so they have to be careful. The E home side. Lina, what does she has? Lina has his smoke and nothing else. Tiny now with how much gold in bank? 2.4, 2.5k, so he can go for a bling dagger if he wants. Um, not knowing if that is that is what he wants. Uh, Windrunner also buying up her mechanism, 10 gold away from it. And uh, Sand King actually stunning the the uh, Windrunner, but uh, his uh, ultimate is going to get denied by the Shackle Trap. Tiny is going to get caught up by the uh, Curse, and Sandstruck not going to land on the Tiny here. He's running <laughs> so fast, and uh, now he's probably going to get stunned up by the Sand King. Yep. He's gonna go down from the combined uh, gank by three heroes. I'm surprised here that Sen King, instead of uh, stunning both of them in the in the, uh, in the camp here, he didn't blink out and stun in this line. He just walk up and stun the Windrunner. I don't know what he did, why he did that. Maybe he wanted to keep the blink dagger in case something went went wrong. Or, but um, fact of the matter is, Windrunner could get away from this mistake. And. Windrunner now with the mechanism completed, uh, Chaos Knight with the drum and uh, power threat, he's Radiant's actually pretty poor with this cool Cupid Cat. They're gonna get this tower. He's sitting with 1.7k gold, so let's see what he's gonna go next. And Rebek now looking for this four staff. He has this staff of wizardry. So he has the arcane boots as well. How many arcane boots do we have on each side? Only one on the dire side and only one on the radiant side, so not a lot of sustain coming out from both of this team, these teams. Hero levels wise, we see that uh, the Dire uh, again taking the advantage. And uh, the gold advantage from the Radiant actually fell off now. QQQ looking at uh, what's on the side. He has to be careful not to get uh, caught by the net. And both sides now are, are farming pretty happily. They are looking to get their uh, core items. And oh, Tiny actually going for the Yasha. So I was saying uh, Tiny is the, the Yasha going to be good on Tiny. And I was actually saying this jokingly, and uh, he is looking for the he is looking for the Yasha, so probably going to go for the Mentor style. Uh, so probably going to go for a Battle Tiny in the form of Aghanim Scepter, uh, really banking on that right-click damage. And uh, Yasha actually not that bad. Uh, the agility a bit wasted, 
But uh, giving him this attack speed, he really needs if he goes for this um, attack speed build. Uh, I mean the, the you know Aghanim build. And Aghanim build usually you will see him with some very very raw attack speed buff. So they're gonna use a smoke like a um, a like a, a Assault Kriaras or a Mask of Madness, but um, nothing usually as as uh, like a Manta. And now they're gonna go on the. So Tiny with the Invis Roots, he's not going to get revealed as fast. And Invoker is going to go down instantly. Very good disruption saving the Invoker. They're going to run away. Tiny, Tiny still... <laughs> the, the Invoker still goes down from the Laguna Blade. Lots of, uh, lots of damage coming from the Radiant side. And uh, Sand King Ultimate not doing anything. He did not catch anyone but Tiny. And Tiny is still quite tanky. 1.5k gold uh, HP. And 3 are going to go down. Uh, Net going to TP away for DR Life. And yes, we see, we see now. A lot of kills coming up from the Radiant side. Very good uh, smoke, and they're gonna go and look for this tower. Tiny with the 15 charge in his drum of and uh, his uh, magic one, also. So two, two drums of endurance for this um, E home side. But uh, drum of endurance, man. Very good items all over the place. So even without this uh, this active ability, this buff, it's still a very good item, giving nine of each uh, attribute, nine damage, and five percent movement speed, five percent attack speed. And Net not going to be able to do anything to prevent this push from happening. The only thing he can do is Shadow Poison from that far away. And Shadow Poison isn't, isn't, going, to do, isn't going to do anything but give the vision on the high ground. And he has to be very careful. Very good four Staff actually pushing the Shadow Demon. So he's going to go down. And then and um, uh, the TFG has to be very careful not to get caught up. And who used the four Staff? It, was it the Rabbit? I think Rabbit pushed the Shadow Demon in the... Uh, in the uh, the in the in the uh, e home side, so have to be very careful. In no, the the bear is gonna TP in time. So Shadow Demon getting pushed inside the enemy uh, team by using the four staff. Very good four staff used by the uh, Rebic. This is an initiation we do not often see, but is very important. The four staff cannot only be used on the ally, but also on your enemy. So. Now we see Chaos Knight going for this VKB and um, he's right to do so, he really needs to stay in this fight and um, with the BKB up he can just withstand all the AoE from Invoker, Sand King Ultimate, he does not have to run away, he can send the brunt of the fight and uh, deal a lot of damage and he's only 300 gold away from it so Nina now also, so Aking Boots, one Bracer, QQQ uh, Mechanism now sitting with 2.3, uh, 2.2k uh, 2 gold so maybe looking for a four staff as well. Windrunner, God, we know that she loves the four staff. And um, scouting the tornado. Sorry, the Roshan. God, that version is so bugged. Scouting the Roshan with the sun strike, seeing that no one's here. Tiny now can actually complete his. Uh, so Chaos Knight buying the BKB. Tiny can actually complete his uh, mental style if he wants it. But um, is he going to buy it before he buys the uh, the the Agonim Scepter? I'm not I'm not sure. No, he's actually going to go for Aghanim Scepter first, a point booster up. Because he... he does, the, the um, Menta style doesn't give you that much uh, movement speed from the Yashra. I think it's like 2% increase. So... Everyone's sitting here. We have... Oh, the Invoker actually taking the last set with his uh, Sport Spirit. And MMY now also with a 4 staff going also for the Ogre Club, so probably going for the BKB as well. And with a 3 BK... no, 2 BKBs up. On the uh, the, the other side, they're going to look very well in the team fight. Sand King, as the time as time flows, he's going to be less and less uh, powerful due to his um, you know epicenter not scaling that well. And uh, they're going to go on the on the chain creeps. Oh, actually, they catch a chain as well. And Cat, Cupid Cat not using the uh, BKB right now, and now he uses it, and he's still taking a lot of damage. He has to be careful to uh, the uh, mechanism popped by uh, the, the heal on side. A lot of damage coming out on the Invoker. The invoker dying right now. And uh, Cupid Cat running away for dear life. Nick still standing in the middle of the fight. And um, Nick actually getting saved. And Tiny burning away. Burning away. But Nick is going to go down. Yes, he is. And now Shadow Demon running for dear life. Is he going to run away? MMY following the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon getting stunned by MMY. And now he's going to fight the MMY. But. Um, Oh, he has to be careful. Oh, MMY taking a lot of damage from his own illusion. Uh, taking a ton of damage actually from his own illusion. Forced to TP away. Oh, uh, Invoker coming out from the backside and trying to get a kill. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. 
Again, a very good fight from Ehom. They actually lost the Lina, they lost the, they lost the Tiny. Oh, so the Tiny died afterwards. So Tiny damage. probably died from Invoker. Did he? Yeah, Invoker killed the Tiny. I do not know if it was a Sin Strike or... I think Invoker bought back instantly oh, and uh, tried to go back and catch the Stragglers. So again, a 4-4-2 four, 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 and uh, even forcing a buyback on the Invoker. I think it was buyback at least. I'm sorry, I can I couldn't really follow this. Uh, too much action going on. And Queen and Winner now also with the four staff. NMY with the four staff. King J, yeah, King J is still poor, but uh, King J is a sacrifice of land. And with the with the blink with the uh, reality rift from the Chaos Knight, two uh, two four staff, plus the fact that the tiny runs around with the. With the phase with plus the drum and the Yasha, it's a lot of mobility coming in from that team. So they can't pretty much can't catch up anyone. And um, you saw in the team fight, basically they decide to go on one guy. They say, okay, we focus Invoker down. Invoker goes down instantly. No amount of uh, mechanism or chain ultimate can save him. He's just gonna get bursted down. And um, with the mobility coming from the E home side, he, Invoker cannot even kite the enemy. And Sharky has to be very careful here. The tiny is looking for him. And blink away. Is he gonna be able to run away? No. Oh, very good stun. And uh, Lan is just gonna give up on the chase. So four staff on the tiny to actually get the uh, the ascent king, but uh, instant barrel strike away, ca catching the tiny. And tiny only 100 gold away from his agon and scepter. And uh, I'm keep talking about e home side. So let's see on the there and the on the uh, MUSC side what do they have shadow demon still sitting very poor but that's what shadow demon that has sand king now has a drum of endurance as well so tanking a bit more oh there are they going to go on the yes they're going to go on nmy nmy getting killed instantly and uh now lamb getting uh nick getting shackled by uh the by qqq here but he's going to be okay lamb already backed off so i was saying um a drum on, on the sand king the Lone Druid has the, uh, the Radiance on the bear, and that's pretty much all he has. He has 1.7k gold, 1.8k gold now, also. And Chen, Chen only sitting with his Mechanism and Arcane Boots, very raw Chen. And Invoker, uh, Phase Boots, Force Staff, and forcing to go for a Cloak to avoid getting killed and sniped instantly. Maybe going for a pipe, the, the god knows they might need a pipe uh, with all the magic damage coming from the Radiant side. I'm surprised no one went the pipe uh, uh, quickly. And uh, did I hear a gem drop? Yes, I heard a gem somewhere. Who has a gem? Yep, the gem is in the base, so... MMO is gonna take it with the Invoker. And Tiny now with the Agadem Scepter, look at his big tree, swinging this big tree around. And he has 300 base damage almost. His illusion are going to deal so much damage actually. Illusion deal base damage, so it doesn't take into account the plus 33, but plus 33 is almost nothing. Usually we see heroes like carry heroes, uh, you know, getting like a Daedalus or a Monkey King bar. And, uh, you know, when they use the the uh, illusion, the illusion uh, the illusion are still very powerful, but they do not take the, the damage from Daedalus or the Monkey King bar. Whereas here, you have the Tiny with a very big uh, base damage in the... Uh, He's looking very strong, and if he has this illusion, every illusion is not going to deal like 100 and foregoing the plus 200. They're going to do 283 strike per hit. And now they're going to go on the Roshan, and uh, Roshan taking so much damage right now. Cupid Cat also taking a lot of damage, going to get scouted out by the uh, Sun Strike, but... Oh, actually, the, the, ra the, the, the Radiant is pretty close to this. The bear is uh, far away, and are they going to go on it? King is going to scout out the Shadow Demon. They know where the Shadow Demon is. E home uh, land is actually going to very good center stomp and double stomp here. They're going to go on it and um, Sand King ultimate and going in. NMY dropping instantly. Chaos Knight taking a lot of damage. He's going to go down as well. No, he isn't. He's running away, but uh, Sand King is going to catch him up. And in the meantime, land going on the Shadow Demon only. So Shadow Demon for two heroes and the the uh, ability to deny the Rosha. Yes, indeed. The MUSC side is going to take that. And they're gonna push down this tower, only 300 gold, uh, 300 health left. And nothing really, uh, nothing really Ahom can do. And Tiny looking behind for some stragglers, I guess. He has to be careful. Oh, MUFC going to go for the base? This is very, very risky, and uh, they're gonna go for it. QQQ sending a, a very good shackle shot, shackle thing 2 in the. But uh, the, uh, the mechanism is gonna pop. 
King Drake taking a lot of damage. King Drake's gonna go down from this. And Lan running away. Lan, are you gonna catch up someone? Very good shackle again, catching the Chen and the Invoker. Chen is gonna go down, but uh, Lan is actually getting caught by the uh, by the Entangle, and Bear's gonna go down. Chen King is, is still alive. Only the Chen dying in this exchange, and uh, no, actually the, the the Shadow Demon as well, and he he actually uh, is now alive again. And the barracks, the barracks went down. The barracks. Are they gonna catch someone? They're gonna catch the bear. They're gonna pound on the bear. And yes, they're gonna catch him. And that's uh, how much time without the bear? That's 95 seconds without the bear. So Lone Druid will just have to farm in the meantime. And uh, without the Radiance, he's not gonna farm that fast. But uh, NUFC, very, very good decision here. They went for the barracks and they got it. That's very important. The heroes respond, the Roshan respond, but the barracks, they don't. So now they have an advantage. And let's see if they can capitalize on this. We see the experience graph going down for the Dire. They had 10k advantage and now they only have 4k. So 6k experience going for the MUFC side in the in the in the side in the in about eight minutes. And gold graph is yeah going from 4k advantage to 3k advantage from the other side. So 7k gold lost for Ehome in this exchange. So what are Ehome gonna do? Lina now sitting at level 11 and scouting not gonna see anything. The four spirits sitting here to see if uh, e the uh, e home side is actually going to go again on the Roshan, and um, you see how much this, the the spirits can do as damage. They they took away at least 300 damage, uh, 300 health from the Chaos Knight, and a lot of uh, wards pop down here. They have two wards there on the top, and actually it's two observer wards. So a little misplay here, I guess. Yeah, how come they have so many uh, wards there? Uh, and QQQ four staffing himself after missing this ward. <laughs> the tornado being a huge pain in the ass again. And um, they're just standing in the mid lane. They do not really know what to do. They are afraid to engage. And Tiny bought the mental style recipe Radiant first. This is strange. Is under There's no real uh, advantage to buying the recipe first. Chaos Knight now with the vitality booster even adding up to this uh, health pool. And um, QQQ at last finally killing these, this uh, this ward. And he now has a ultimate orb, so he's feeling pretty confident as well. So now they're gonna go on the Roshan. And um, the Dyer's dire side is actually, the Radiant side are actually pretty spread out, so Roshan might be getting killed. But uh, they have to be, they have to go and kill it faster. Right now, I'm, I'm, yeah, right. The, oh, the, the MMY MM is actually delaying the enemy with the King Drake, and uh, they're delaying him pretty well. Now, Tiny's gonna come in, and he's gonna land his uh, his combo on the, uh, <laughs> the Sand King. And Sand King melts away with the one swipe of his big trunk. And they still haven't got Roshan. Roshan now ever, ever so low on health. And now that they killed the Sand King, now that they know that the Sand King can't blink with the ultimate, they're probably going to go. And Wild King going in, one tornado going to go, and and the oh the the uh, invoker going in with the BKB. Are uh, is are they going to be able to do anything? The oh Cupid Cat with very low health, Tiny also with very low health, but uh, getting kill, uh, getting a kill on the Chen, getting a kill on the Shadow Demon. The invoker getting shackled here, and uh, Tiny is going to get killed by this the bear, but uh, TFG here is still fighting. But uh, they cannot bring him down, he's too tanky. And uh, the bear's coming in, and the bear's gonna deal a lot of damage. But the, oh, the, the spirit there got, got killed, and uh, no... no uh, oh, very good shackle shot here by the Windrunner. Picking up the invoker that was uh, ghost staffing away, ghost walking away. And the bear, the bear could have get summoned, he still has 4 seconds. And QQQ taking a lot of damage, and he has to be careful. Oh, Nick getting caught up by uh, NNY, and... Um, that is a free kill for Ehome. Yes, please. A kill on the carry. Ah, uh, Lone Druid getting caught up by the uh, by the, by the very good the telekinesis plus the sense of the the butter strike stolen by the Sand King. And uh, maybe he didn't know there was like a ward here watching him. So maybe he felt actually pretty confident. And Walking's now still standing around, being very pesky, doing what. Walking do the best, walking around and flapping their wings. And uh, Roshan with all these engagements still not dead. He's sitting at 2k health, so, so 
you home maybe looking for uh, Roshan one last time and the 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 range racks actually went down also so tornado again but uh, getting sniped saying nope walking you're not going to use your tornado on me and uh, again the shadow demon on the side lane he's gonna get cut off nope he's not and Roshan finally dies, no one picked the Aegis, no, finally Tiny gets it. And uh, oh, very good Centaur stun, stunning 3, but not gonna not gonna have anyone following up. And Winner is only 700 away from her Sheepstick if she wants it, but maybe she's looking to keep some for the buyback. Right now it's very dangerous, if she has no buyback and she gets killed, she get killed uh, it might be a second set of racks going down. Same with Chaos Knight, Chaos Knight should be uh, having enough for buyback. Tiny. Tiny has the again him, so he has to. He's pretty much okay. Oh, uh, and uh, see how much this cleave helps him to kill the creep wave. One sweep, one toss, and uh, there lights out for the creep wave. Now this final tower going down for the radiant side, the uh, dire side. The, di the radiant kill the final outer tower, and um, MUFC they still have two outer towers here. So even if they lose a fight. They all, they're not gonna die as... Oh, actually, I'm wrong. I was going to say they're not gonna get pushed as fast as uh, as they might. But the Tiny with Aghanim Scepter, this is one of the fastest pushes, uh, push pusher in the in the game. With the Lycan and the Spirit Bear that is farmed. So, I guess it's... I guess it's pretty even with the Spirit Bear on one side and the, the Tiny on the other. But still Tiny with this Aghanim Scepter. If he deals... He deals 75% bonus damage to buildings. See how much damage he deals right now? It's 300 hit, uh, 300 damage per hit. With 75% bonus, it's like 500 uh, damage per hit. And don't forget that we're probably going to see a Mentor style, so this is going to add up to his DPS and add up something like 66%, 33% by uh, by each illusion. And right now, I feel that uh, although the Radiant had the advantage with this kill and this uh, this uh, lane control here. This uh, this oh, uh, Invoker getting attacked by Lamb, but uh, Lamb after his combo not being able to do anything but follow the Invoker around and punching him in the face. It, it's actually pretty dangerous because a uh, a good Invoker has a good amount of spells to in, at his disposal and uh, he can really shut down the Tiny by uh, chaining his disables. So, Tiny now with his mental stuff. I was saying, they got this lane here, they got this Rax, but uh, it doesn't seem like they're capitalizing on, on this. And I don't see, like, uh, now I see that Ehome is going to go back and, uh, and yeah, we see the gold graph going down and up again, and now this, uh, again, oh, actually, it, it wasn't a Radiant favor here, so it goes down again, and now it goes up again for the Radiant. So, I guess I was wrong, but uh, experience-wise, it's again going down to the advantage of the, uh, the Ehome side. So let's see for the radiant. What do what item did they got? Uh, Sharky standing up with the ghost scepter. I'm not sure it's a really good idea. He has a four staff as well, so more mobility always good. But ghost scepter here, man, you're not probably gonna, not gonna get killed by uh, chaos knight swings or tiny punches. But the ghost scepter, as soon as you pop it, if you pop it wrong, it's getting a one shot kill by the Laguna blade plus all the nukes coming in from the radiant side, the dire side. Blade mail on the lone druid plus the lone druid. What is what is on his bear? His bear has the hyperstone only. So, but uh, he, he's sitting at 3k gold, so pretty okay. The shadow demon now is a four staff as well and a power trade, so even more tanky than before. Still nothing really huge, but um, so Chen Chen he's looking for his uh, agonim scepter, but still 1.7k gold away from it. Invoker now with a uh, black king bar. Uh, the four staff and almost up to his Yasha with the uh, drum of endurance. So everyone's farming pretty well. Uh, Lina, the only one on the dire side, not having anything but like arcane boots and two bracers. Tiny with the uh, mental style finished and Agate Scepter drum, face boots, and of course the Aegis. Uh, Windrunner now has her vice, the sight of vice, uh, gem of true sight just bought, and um, mechanism plus four staff. And Tranquil Boots, she might want to change this later on. Chaos Knight only with Blacking Bar Drum and Vitality Booster. He's looking towards uh, his uh, 
hard, but uh, he's far from it. He's still quite far from it. And uh, it's quite normal because he keeps on getting killed. And Rebic also now completed his blocking bar, so a lot of um, the, the invoker is going to lo lose a lot of potency in these team fights because his spells are going to get cut. But uh, it's okay because he's still an exhort invoker, so he deals a lot of damage. If you see here, 260 uh, per hit, damage per hit, and um, exhort invokers actually, even if they can't really deal a lot of damage with their spells, the Four spirits are going to deal a lot of damage, and um, the fact that his right click is actually pretty powerful as well, it's going to be um, it's going to be good. And smoke used by the radiant, the dire side, and they're going to run into invoker. Invoker just sitting here. I do not know what he's doing. And now he sees the uh, he sees QQQ, and they're just going to change the disable. Laguna blade even used by the Lina to make sure that uh, he goes down. No. They do not want him to go away, to port away, or to blink away, or four staff, or whatever. Four heroes actually smoking up to get one kill. It's pretty costly, but uh, it's late game. So Invoker killing him like this puts him puts him a bit uh, a bit late, a bit um, away from his uh, from his uh, ah, uh, side of vice cheapstick. And right now, not a whole lot happening. Uh, everyone just sitting here farming up. On each side, so E home farming their side on the forest and uh, getting the kills, and uh, whenever there is stragglers running in the forest. And uh, ward warding wise, we have to see that um, there is almost no wards. It's only sentry wards. They have no vision whatsoever. The radiant, no wards. The dire, no wards. So right now they're play pretty much playing blind and playing safe. We see that uh, even the even um, Nick is uh, being so careful that uh, he's only sending his bear to burn down his uh, the enemy creeps. He's not sending it close enough to get uh, the experience because he fears what is coming here, which is a gank. Spirit bear still sitting around and um, Chaos Knight looking for something and they're gonna get the bear but uh, no. Nope. Oh, the bear gets resummoned but uh, still dies. And Lundrid, what are you doing here? You're getting He's getting blocked by the Chen's uh, giant wolf and he's gonna try and TP away. He is. This this is a big mistake by Chen. Blocking his ally with his wolf and uh, this forces a TP from the Lundrid and now it's a TP he doesn't have. It's 60 seconds with all the TP to, and uh, he has to run back in so how are taking a lot of damage. Are they gonna go and try to defend it? Right now the game is still everyone's game. Nick is at uh, TFG is gonna initiate with the uh, defend defending blast. The bear is gonna get brought down, and the bear the bear just respawned. And the, oh, actually, the bear doesn't have any items, so it's okay. All the items are transferred on the lone druid. But still, this is a free bear, and it's 70 seconds without a bear, without any entangle. The tower got denied, and uh, they're probably gonna look for the middle lane tower. Oh, see how much damage he deals. One swing, two swing. And three swings and boom! No more tower. Oh, this tiny pushes the tower so quickly. And look at look at just the the, the illusion damage on the tower. Can you just imagine? These are, these are illusions. These are not. These are not the real. This is not the real tiny. And when the real tiny is gonna come in, the tower is gonna go down. But in like in two, three swipes. So the chaos. Uh, the uh, the four spirits. Stolen by MMY using them and uh, using them on the enemy's four spirit and uh, illusion will get it popped, get popped by Chaos Knight and Tiny and um, Sand King coming in, blinking away. The Meteor is coming in to kill the illusion, but too late. The tower is going to go down and now Lamb's looking for something. Lamb also has this boost of travel, so he can teleport if there's a problem. And oh, the Tiny's illusion now pounding on himself. And they have to be careful, they have to be careful, this tower is taking a lot of damage. They have to do something, they cannot just stay there and siege the tower, uh, the, the barracks. And they're gonna go in and they're gonna take the tower, the, the barracks. The glyph has been used and now they back off. They really back off? Are they really backing off or are they, yeah. I was thinking about a smoke bait, but uh, Tiny's gonna come in and save his tower. So we see here the advantage of having, uh, of having pushed a lane earlier is the fact that when you actually, actually attack an enemy lane by yourself, if you have no one uh, defending, you have to do something. You cannot just stay here and wait it out. You cannot siege because the lane is going to push and as you saw, it took down one tower and the other tower is almost dead. 
the bear scouting out. Roshan not up yet, only a matter of seconds now. And MY running around Arcane Boots, 4 staff, Black King Bar, 3k three, three gold. So, and winner at 2.6k gold as well. King J, King J on the Lina, 3 Bracers, 1 Magic Wand, and only 1 Smoke of Deceit. Poor man build, yep. And Chaos Knight now finishes his Heart of Tarask, so no buybacks for him, but. Um, Oh, so Tiny using his illusion to scout. Maybe by maybe baiting, but uh, they're gonna see that it's not the real one. Oh, uh, actually, Nick is actually the uh, net is actually going to go on the illusion. He knew that it was an illusion because he wasn't got uh, he got didn't get uh, dispelled uh, out of smoke. Still, he decided to go on him. I do not know why. And all the radiants are actually hiding in the jungle. They're waiting for a good opportunity to get a kill. They won't get any. So, Gem also on Shadow Demon. All the item transfers to the Lone Druid and not on the bear. Oh, actually he's going to give the Radiance to the bear. So the bear can scout and burn. The bear is going to get caught and... And he's not seeing them. He This gives a false sense of security. Uh, Tiny is going to uh, gonna get the Sand King. And Sand King are getting saved by the uh, Disruption again. And he used the BKB, and this is a big fight. Everything's going on. The uh, Invoker is dying, buying back as soon as possible. Sand King actually managed to get his ultimate out, but QQQ good for staff running away. And fights happening everywhere. Windrunner sniping the Sand King. The, uh, oh, the poor Chen actually getting caught up again. And this is very looking very bad for MUFC. They cannot define 3 against 5, and... And even with the oh, this is a huge creep of uh, creep wave coming in, and Lamb is gonna take care of it instantly with one two swipes. And are they gonna get it? And Net, what are you doing, Net? Whew! He didn't get scouted by the tiny. <laughs> but uh, this was a dead shadow demon indeed. If he what if he got spotted, so they're gonna go on the um, Roshan on the tornado, and uh, they're gonna get him no problem. So it's gonna be a gonna be a a, 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 a uh, Aegis for the next fight. Ned's still concerned and still hidden here. He's not doing anything. Maybe he doesn't want to waste the TP. But uh, it's very risky here. And right now, Eho, you know, you cannot really make a mistake anymore. If you lose a team fight and the creepways are pushing in, and I'm under the impression that they could even have brute force as a tower. With the tiny coming in, even the the backdoor regeneration is not gonna be enough. Oh, uh, and Net, what are you doing here? So Net gonna get killed by the Tiny. And Tiny selling up his Realm of Endurance to... Oh, well, killing his Sun Strike in the head, but uh, not gonna be enough. He's going for the Hyper Stone, so... He's going for the, uh, the Acid Cuirass as well. And he's going to be able to heal up and teleport middle lane, if that's what they want. But uh, everyone's still up for the Radiant side, except for Net, who just caught, get caught, got caught up by the Tiny. I really don't know what he tried, he tried to achieve here. I mean, come on, the tiny is so farmed up. He he's so fed. What can a poor support shadow demon do? Even with the disruption, copying uh, too tiny. Nah. Anyway, so they're gonna defend the top tower, the top lane, and I think that they're just gonna take um right now since they have this uh oh the rain of that cleave. The rain of that cleave. <laughs> so I'm, I'm guessing once they have pushed down the, the lanes, they are going to look for a push because right now they're looking very, very good e-home. See the difference in gold earn? It's like doing a roller coaster, and now it's again for the e-home side, the adventure for the e-home side. Experience was 20k experience in the adventure of the dire. They are looking so good e-home. And um, MUFC now. Arsad Karas, Blade Mail, Radiance, it feels like uh, it's a lot, but it's not enough. Oh, Chen now has the Aghanim Scepter, so they have the Sieging Power. And Chaos Knight with a double damage in the bottle, so they have to be very careful. Oh, the Shadow Demon is going to get caught up, but in the meantime, Cubit Cat taking too much damage, and Cubit Cat using the ultimate right now, but everyone's low on health. Cubit Cat still, still alive here. Shadow Demon get, get killed, and... Chen using the Hand of God, uh, Chaos Knight died, uh, died but uh, 
the laundry taking too much damage. He's gonna go down as well. Tiny swipes one, two, three, four, and he's gonna kill the uh, he's gonna kill the Chen Invoker running away. Invoker uh, is he gonna run away? No, he's not. A uh, telekinesis uh, followed by a hex, and now Invoker Invoker run away. Invoker not going to be able to run away. Sand King. This little burst right here, he's so afraid and he's gonna force them himself away that he has a TP, he has no TP score, so he has to waddle back to the to base. And uh, whoa, this is looking very, very bad now for the MUFC side. Nick actually bought back, but uh, now Tiny is gonna just go in and pound on the range barracks. One, two, three, four, and five. That's how much. That's how much health. 1.5k health down in an instant. And same for this tower. See, punch, 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 punch. Only the glyph's gonna save the tower for a few seconds and punch a few bits. And now it's over. The second melee barrier is gonna go down. Everyone actually alive for the radiant side, bar the invoker. So we're gonna have to see. And Tiny is getting, getting attacked. Uh, Winner is gonna get attacked as well. Winner is taking a lot of damage, and the uh, Laguna Blade going to go on the Shadow Demon. Now the uh, Sand King Ultimate not hitting anyone. Kingdra is gonna go down, and uh, E Home QQQ is actually killing everyone. Sand King also gonna go down. Very very good, um, extremely good um, uh, telekinesis is uh, here. You know, stunning everyone, and now it's gonna be GG. Sharky calls the GG. Invoker, nothing he can do on his own. He he. He can delay as much as he can, but uh, now everyone without the buyback and 40 seconds way enough time to bear down all the towers. So GG gonna get caught up, called, and uh, TFG trying to get the last kill on QQQ. Is he gonna get it? Yes, he is. And MMY trying to get the revenge and going on the on TFG using the sense strike. Now stealing up the chaos meteor and. Ev TFG, TFG, be careful about the mid air. He is four stepping himself away. Winner and buying back, and uh, you know, Miller Barracks going to go down as well. The game is over, the game is over anyway, but um, they still want to have fun. Tiny here buying the Assault Cuirass. Four, still with 5k gold with the Assault Cuirass just bought up. This is insane. So, very, very good play by MUSC and by E Home. MUC putting a good amount of pressure in the early game, uh, considering Ehome had a stronger ganking lineup and the, the you know the the burst damage, they still managed to get a tower and uh, and uh, I gotta say, good play by MUC, but better play yet by Ehome coming back in this fight, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next game. It promised to be very interesting as well. See ya guys.